then he says something strange. Um, he says, oh, I got to go. We're being evacuated. So we proceed. Everybody's feeling a little better now. I go and, you know, I eat a snack. I take out, I believe it was a string cheese, maybe some cheese and crackers or something. Everybody's starting to get a little bit more in their rhythm. Um, we're feeling good. It was not our fault. No one got hurt. It was an oversight somewhere and we were going to proceed on our route. No more interruptions. We are good. I'm going to get the training I need. I'm excited. This is my first start on the road. Let's go. Let's go. I'm thinking to myself, you know. Oh, man. But no, I, I guess I didn't know. Because what happened next, I would never have imagined. We get to the destination. I pull out my phone and I notice I had a, a missed text from my, my instructor, my trainer, mentor, coordinator. Um, and he basically says, hey, call me when you get, you know, to your destination. And I'm thinking, what? Call you? Like, oh, snap. Like, what did I do? Like, is this got something to do with what happened earlier? Is, is it my fault? You know, I'm freaking out. I don't know what to think at this point, you know. I'm just wondering, why does he want me to call him? <sighs> so we get to the terminal. And I finally build up enough courage to give him a call. And I'm like... We'll call him Tim for his own privacy. I don't want to disclose his name. I call my coordinator. And I'm like, hey, you know, what's up, Tim? This is Hameen. I'm calling you back. You know, what's going on? And he's like, oh, okay. You, How was the trip? Uh, I'm glad you made it. Then he says something strange. Um, he says, oh, I got to go. We're being evacuated. Slams the phone down, and you know, I'm thinking at this point, what the hell is going on today? At this point, I'm not, I don't know what to think. Um, I go back to my crew, and I talk to my conductor and my engineer. And I'm like, man, something's going on over in Superior. Um... I just talked to Tim, and he just said that Superior is being evacuated. You know, and I'm thinking, man, is this some kind of terrorist attack? Did somebody come in shooting? Like, why would Superior Terminal be evacuated? What is going on? Like, no one, you know, the, the only times a the terminal shut down is a serious emergency and I'm just like what could possibly be happening so my conductor does a little investigating and uh, she turns on the news and there's first thing I see is a bunch of smoke uh, and it's this big headline superior refinery explosion now, the fire chief tells us at least five people were taken to hospitals in Duluth. A total of 11 people after that blast were hurt. You know, and I'm like, what? Like, you got to be kidding me. After the morning I had, now you're telling me that Superior is evacuated because of a chemical explosion? And I'm just thinking, man, I must be dreaming at this point. Like, nobody's day can be going this bad. Like, you've just got to be kidding me right now. So, 
for confirmation, I text my roommate. And I'm like, hey, is everything okay? You know, what's going on? And he confirms, yeah, we had an explosion. I got to evacuate. And he sends me these pictures. He sends me all these pictures of our house covered in black smoke. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. So we get take we take the van to our hotel where we're gonna stay for the night. Um, I immediately set things up so I can shoot a video and just let everybody know uh, that I'm okay, you know, because again I'm a I'm a trainee, I'm a, a student, and I just wanted friends and family at home and everybody to know that I'm good. That I wasn't even in Superior at the time of the explosion. So, I basically go and I shoot that video. I just wanted to catch up, let you guys know everything's all good. Um, I'm all safe with the, uh, from the, uh, the explosion that happened over in Superior. So the next day, I meet everyone back at the terminal. We took the van back, and we're taking a coal train load, uh, or empty coal train. We're taking it back to Superior. And, you know, we're thinking, man, can we even go to Superior? Is it still under evacuation? And is the terminal still shut down? You know, we just didn't really know what to expect. But we had orders to take the train back, so that's what we did. Uh, it was a pretty good trip. Of course, I was still training with the conductor, so I did plenty of track warrants and um, form Bs, and I was calling out signals and just doing all the things conductors do and just getting my training. But in the back of my head, I'm just wondering, what am I going to come home to? Like, what is happening in Superior? And, you know, it was about a seven-hour ride for us. We're all tired, and I'm just like, you know, is the terminal in Superior even open? Are they going to let us in? Are we going to have to hurry up and wait? And, oh, man, I just had all these thoughts going through my mind. Like, I am so over this trip right now, you know. Um, so we get about 20 minutes in. And uh, the yard master is like, okay, you guys, um, you know, we're going to give you the green light. Come on in. You know, uh, terminal's open. Everything's ready to go. And I'm just like, yes, you know, cool. Uh, and that's kind of uh, when the conductor kind of gave me a nickname. Because, you know, on the railroad, one of the first things you're going to get is a nickname of sorts. And she decided she would name me the Dark Cloud. Me. And I'm like, what did I do? And she's like, well, you're bad luck, and I've never had a trip this bad, and, you know, this is your first time out, and all of a sudden all these things happen. And I'm like, really? Like, it happened to me too, you know? And I don't know, it was all fun and games. Um, but, yeah, she said, yeah, I'm going to nickname you the Dark Cloud, and, yeah, yeah, that, that just tops it off right there. So, so we get back, and um, the city, you know, looks fine. It's still a little bit foggy. Uh, you can see that the, the cloud, the chemical clouds are starting to, you know, whisk away, whatever. Everything looks like it is coming back to normal. A lot of the people have came back to their homes. And I'm just, you know, I'm coming into the terminal, putting my bag up, going to the computer. I'm ready to tie up for the day, right? You know, I'm ready to get up out of there. And, oh, man. I, it, I'm just thinking to myself, what a trip. Man, what is that over there? Yeah, I'm thinking, what a trip. You know, can it can anything be so much so crazy, right? Yeah, and um, that was it. You know, 
We made it back safely. Everything in Superior was okay. I was able to get back to my place and uh, everything is all good now. Um, I just wanted to share that story with you guys. I thought it was a little crazy. So I thought, you know, you guys would like to hear it. Um, if you guys like this kind of stuff, you know, it's Halloween, it's October. I've, you know, I've been looking at some creepy railroad stories. So if you guys like that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments. I could tell you guys, you know, some kind of creepy railroad story or something, make it fun for you guys. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Um, also, if you guys like this video, don't forget to hit that like button below. And if you guys um, have not subscribed yet, which I have no clue why you wouldn't subscribe by now. But if for any chance you have not, go ahead and subscribe now by hitting that red subscribe button below there. And also don't forget that alert -a bell when you, that way you guys know when I'm online and I like to go online and go live quite a bit and when I upload new stuff. That way you guys don't miss anything. And if you guys think this video can be helpful or entertaining for somebody else, share it. You know, don't keep this secret to yourself. We're a community, right? Until the next time, I guess I'll see you on the rails. Peace. Have you ever...